How's it going gamers? My name is Rush Code, <laughs> and in today's video I wanted to go over a couple of things to do with widgets. It could really apply to anything but I'm using widgets specifically for this use case. So if I press a button I can activate the left widget. If I press it again it disappears. If I press another button I activate the right widget, press it again and it disappears. The way this works is I actually have set up some input keys for it so if you want to press Q it'll open the left widget. If you press E, it'll open the right widget. The main point of this video is to show you how I made this dynamic in that if I change these letters, then everything inside the blueprints will update to follow those new letters as well. The reason this matters is because if you go into a widget, let's say you've already set it up and when you fire the command to open it, it will set it to some kind of focus. And then if you want to close it, you might need some kind of key down or override function. Usually at this point here, if I just disconnect this, this bit here will need to be specified for whatever key we're using. So for example, the Q key. This becomes a problem though if I wanted to change my input to a different key, but then in the blueprint it's still hard-coded as a Q key. The best way to fix this is to have some kind of variable that remembers which key has been specified in the game and then just hook that in here. But the way you want to get that key and save it is by going to your controller and as soon as you press the input action using the whatever key you're using it'll save it into its own variable which we can then grab from inside the widget so when you go to the widget after setting the focus for it it can cast to your controller and grab the variable from there and save it into a local variable for the widget and then you can just use that to check and see which key has been pressed and so on and so forth and this is the better way to go as compared to wanting to use a specific key event like pressing the Q key as an event and then removing the widget from there. This is a tricky event to work with. I, I can't quite understand how or why or when it fires because it seems to just fire whenever you press it and it doesn't matter if it's focused or not. If you have a, an override, it seems to override that too as well. So it's, it's just a bit messy to work with. Plus the fact that it's hard coded so if you changed your input to, let's say I change this input here to uh, 1, this doesn't update. So it's going to be a real problem if you changed your input but then didn't change it here. But even this may not be the best way to do it just because you can also do things in C++ and who knows what else you can do. Maybe there's another node that can do this better. So this is just meant to be a quick way for you to fix up or put something in where you can track the change if you've already set it up using some kind of hard code thing. So you don't have to change everything else in your code, you just need to add in this extra variable which is grabbed from your controller and saved. And the whole point of setting the focus is because that allows the game to listen in on keyboard events when we open the widget and add it to the viewport. I'm also setting the input mode to be UI only which means only mouse input would work and not the keyboard input. So set focus will fix that but once again it doesn't work very well with this thing over here so you want to avoid that and just use an override function here. So I've already used key down so you won't see it here you can see on key up. On key down is already in here. When that's fired it will remove the widget. And I basically did the same thing with the right widget. Pretty much copy and paste. So you have your set focus, the cast and saving the widget key from the controller. Custom event for removing the widget and then an override function for checking to see which key has been pressed and removing the widget as necessary. And of course now that I've changed the input to 1 for the left widget, pressing a 1 will activate it and pressing a 1 again will deactivate it. If I press Q, nothing happens because it's not hard coded in. Pressing E will still activate the right widget. Pressing E again will remove it. So pretty short tutorial. If it made sense, let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching guys. If you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Rush code out.